everyone i'm back with another video so today we're going to clean the kitchen and i thought i would do like a story time and i thought i would do something different today um i'm going to put dishes away put that away clean up a little bit um I did clean yesterday, but if you know anything about OCD, um, I am clinically diagnosed with OCD, but the difference between the personality and the OCD like diagnosis is that the personality they do it naturally so it can be like since they were like one or two years old they were always that type of person where they always wash their hands they would always clean up and pick up after themselves it's like it's something that they want to do and um, something they just enjoy doing. It's just what they do on a day-to-day -day normal basis rather than someone that's diagnosed with OCD like me. I have to do it because of the intrusive thoughts that are in my mind. So I get these intrusive thoughts of, let's say, okay, the sink is dirty, right? If I touch the sink, cause now the sink's dirty from all the dirty dishes. If I touch the sink and I put my hand, my fingers on my mouth, or I eat something right after touching the dirty sink or the dishes, I'm going to get sick and I'm going to pass that's the intrusive thought that goes along with the OCD so that's why I have to clean and stay cleaning so I don't get sick that's the intrusive thought I'm scared of germs um, and I'm afraid of getting sick by anything that is dirty, filthy, or whatnot. That's my fear. So I clean to prevent from getting sick, which cleaning will also make me sick in the long term um, if I don't protect myself. So it's a lose-lose situation for me. I either clean to stay healthy or I clean and get sick so my options are I have no options I get sick either way um, that's just my reality because of my allergies so let's start with the dishes
I wanted to tell you about, I think I was having a delusion, part of it, I think I was having a delusion, but part of it is true. So I want to explain. So yesterday I told my dad and my stepmom I said there's microchips in mirrors and they looked at me as if I was crazy now if you know anything about mental illness you know not to like if Especially someone who suffers from bipolar or schizophrenia and they have psychosis. You shouldn't really dismiss their delusion. You should just agree. And then, you know, talk your way out of, you know, the conversation um, in a nice way. Um, not so like much as like provoking because if you provoke them you might make them angry or upset it can make them violent or hostile um i know this because i've been in several different like <laughs> mental hospitals and and i've been in mental health programs i've been around a lot a lot of like mentally ill people so i know how to treat them with respect, but also keep my distance so I don't engage in like a negative manner, if that makes sense. Um, and well, I told them, I said, you know, there's microchips in the mirrors and they said, if there was microchips and mirrors, then there wouldn't be enough time for them to listen to everyone and spy on everyone. And I said, no. I said, are you, are you listening to what I'm telling you? There's micro, microchips in mirrors. It's a thing. Um, and that's when he said, oh, we need to give you your Risperdone early. And I was like, okay. So he just assumes, you know, that I am having that I'm having an episode I'm under psychosis right now and I'm paranoid and he thinks that the Risperdone is gonna make the delusion go away it doesn't medicine is not a cure for mental illness mental illness there's no cure for mental illness. As you get older, if you suffer from mental illness, as you get older, 
it gets worse. If there's no treatment, you're not taking any prescriptions, you're not in therapy, you're not self-medicating in a healthy way to make yourself better, it can progressively get worse with age. That's true. That's a fact. They also dismiss that. I was like, are you kidding me right now? Am, uh, am I not like... Like, why is that a thing? You know what I mean? Like, if someone is suffering, you know what I mean? Like, why would what they believe be dismissed instead of, okay, let's think about what's been said and then go from there. No, it's immediately like, I'm immediately like shut down. And I see that a lot with people with mental illness, you know, I, I, you know, when I was in the hospital, you know, there was some pretty sick people who were very unwell and they were in much need of help more than others. And I just kept my distance, you know, I didn't really engage because you know, I understand the psychosis, like, I understand the psychosis and what they're going through as far as that. So every time I would see someone hallucinate or have a delusion and they came to me with it, I engaged in a healthy way and I said positive things about what they were saying. I did not dismiss what they were saying, I just agreed and I engaged and then I just walked away when they were in their own little world, I walked away. Um, that's the best way to do it. And, you know, I seen staff shut them down completely when they came to them with a delusion um, and they shut them down completely and they just freaked out. They freaked out, they had a huge meltdown and they ended up locking them behind a room and isolated them from everyone. And that could have easily been avoided if the staff just said, okay, everything's okay, I'm sure, blah, blah, blah whatever they're saying, agree nicely and slowly walk away when they're not paying attention to you anymore. And that will cause less conflict and less problems in the hospitals, in the clinics. Trust me, I've been around these people for a very long time for like, I've been around these people for like, 15 years, so I, I know what you should and should not do. Um,
that's it for this video. Um, there's a video that I need to do outside and um, I'm going to do that next and um, I'll see you guys next one.